Hello there, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this week's video I'm going to be sharing how I use these papers that I printed in my last video. They, these were botanical prints that I made on my big jelly plate uh, using dried um, plants. So if you want to watch that one first you can go back to the previous video I shared. But do you want to see how I can use these today? What I'm going to do is take one of my favourite sketchbooks that's always lying on my desk and it's got a really plain black cover so it's not very exciting to look at and I do like things to look quite um, aesthetic when I'm working. I've got my walls and little pots and things so this black is not really doing a lot for me. So what I think I'm going to do is cover it with my botanical prints and paint into it and add details. So if you're interested in following along with that process you're more than welcome. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. So I thought I'd start this video by just showing you my inspiration wall and my plants to let you see how, how I work and how I find inspiration. So I love these little dishes that I've made with mostly with air dry clay and then napkins or hand painted. I also look for little pots in charity shops to put my paint brushes in. So I take my prints I put them up on the wall or something new I'm working on, just to, an idea that's maybe going to spark something. So I find that's quite a good way to sort of spark ideas. I've got my little sketchbooks open here as well. They're really handy for just, if, just because they're there, they kind of spark ideas. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you snippets of how I created this um, journal cover. This is one of my sketchbooks and um, I decided to cover the boring black cover with some of the gel prints that I created in my last video. Now if you can see up closely here, there's elements of text behind there. There's lovely textured areas that are highlighted with gold. You can see a tree in the background, you know, so there's a lot going on in this piece and many different layers. And um, I put out a survey in my newsletter asking what sort of things you're, you struggle with or you'd like to learn about. And creating layers was, what, was one thing that came up for most people that they would like to learn more about that. So I just want to explain to you a little bit about creating layers. So if you're making jelly prints, there's two ways of doing that. So this one here, um, I have printed three times on the one area. Now that um, gives you um, a lot of depth in the one print but there's another way to use your jelly print in a painting which is a single print so this is like the outline of a, of a plant so if, if I had a plant on my jelly plate and I pressed it paint down then the plant then the paper and pull the paper off you'll be left with this sort of silhouette shape now what you can do is take have collage on your painting and then take your thin paper and place it on top of your text or whatever it is you've painted below. Now I'm just going to spray this with water just to show you what we're like. If you added a, a medium, like a gloss medium or a matte medium to this paper, it would then become transparent. So you can then see what's going on beneath. You've still got the shape of the plant, the silhouette, but you see what's going on. So that is creating a layer. So you can do it with, you can try it out on different papers before you commit to, to gluing it down. So that's what it looks like and that's getting a bit lost. So I think it worked better on top of that green area. It was, you can still see the shape of the, the plant clearly with that one. So it's just trial and error, trying things out and seeing if they work. Try it on top of text for instance. How does that work? Because this paper is so transparent and that paint is quite transparent, you can see the both, so it's not really working that well. Let's try another one. So in this one here, I have a painting which was a jelly print and then I have um, hand-painted Chinese style leaves onto a piece of uh, Chinese paper and then I've glued them on. So I'm trying to sort of pull all these elements together. And what I could do is try putting one of my prints on top of that just to give another layer. So let's see what happens when I add the water to this one. 
And because these are the same tonal value, those um, sort of aqua blues, they are showing on there. So that to me works quite well. So I think I would be happy with that and I would let that dry and then I'd go in and glue that down using um, this type of glue. It's called matte medium. It's very liquid and it works really well for this type of um, process. So I'm going to begin by coating my sketchbook with a layer of clear gesso and this helps the paper adhere to the surface. It also helps to cover up that black so that when I place tissue papers on top like that one there you can see what's going on in the image. So I want to show some of this tree quite like that part there. So I begin by using a matte medium glue and I'm gluing on my first layer here which is on wet strength tissue paper. It's a, a print of um, some text and I, I did that and as an image transfer. So I'm making sure that's glued in nicely and I'll use a tool called a catalyst wedge to make sure there's no wrinkles. So now that's dried I'm adding a second layer and I've actually got one whole sheet that I'm going to use and it, it was actually a bit tricky. It probably would have been easier if I just cut it up into sections. So it took me a little bit of fiddling about to get this down the way I wanted it. But it's on the Marushi paper and it seems to be quite strong. It's not ripping when I'm pulling it up and fiddling about with it there. So what I was really trying to do here was to get that open um, flower there that's like a silhouette of a flower shape. I wanted to be able to see the text coming through behind that. So you can see that there, that it did work in that area. I'm just showing you there. So when I was sort of pushing it down and trying to get the book to close, I did rip um, the, this, the edge there. So I'm going to go over that with another piece of collage in a minute. I'm just seeing if that botanical bit will work there. And what I'm going to do is paint over some of those trees so only little bits will show. So this is kind of my rescue piece for the spine. So the very thin papers work well for your spine because the book's able to move and it doesn't tear. So I'm adding more elements here um, as my under layers. So I'm trying different types of paper, different textures to build up more uh, um, different layers. So it's not really working that well. So I'm trying here with some gold paint to see if I can pull that back a bit. Um, so I'm just sort of playing with paint just now. The great thing about collage is you can work on top of it. You can add more collage. You just keep going until you get things working the way that you want them. So I'm trying to pull it back a little bit with the white lighter paint there. And <clears throat> I just felt it wasn't working. So what I did was I took some more collage and layered over the top of that. And that worked really well because I could just see some of those dots coming through the um, botanical shapes. And I really liked that layer. So this started working for me quite well at this point. So just smoothing that down with the matte gel medium. Again with the Marushi paper, so it's very, very thin layers of prints overlaying each other. But I love that little bit of dot pattern coming through the, the flower shape there on both sides. And I did sort of brighten those up with ink over the top, which I, I haven't showed you here, but that's once we get to the next stage, you'll be able to see that shortly. So I've added some more blue to the piece and then I'm just trying to pull it together at the end here using some pan pastel with the gold to highlight some of the areas that are a little bit raised. Um, just pulling up some of the like the dots and that was quite raised the paint so it's nice that the, the gold pan pastel can highlight those areas. So I'm quite happy with how it turned out. So this is the finished journal page. I hope you've enjoyed following along. It was just a sneak peek into this process. If you want to see the, the whole process step by step, I will be sharing that on my botanical gel printing course, which comes out in April. It's a signature course, so there's a lot of different lessons in there and um, ways to use your gel plate and how to complete finished paintings like this one. Um, so there is a wait list 
and I'll put the link below for that um, that course. I really enjoyed this project and hope you've got a, a little bit of an idea how to layer your prints after watching this. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, if you could hit the like and the subscribe, maybe leave a comment to let me know if you enjoyed it or not, or ideas of what else you'd like to see from me. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching. Bye for now.